All right, so upper extremity nerve and injuries. So we're going to start with the axillary nerve, axillary nerve. This is not depicted in the picture on the right, but it's pretty much something that's like going over here. It's up here in the upper arm. And it can get injured by a fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus. So if you have a fracture here, then you're going to injure your axillary nerve. The other thing that can happen is an anterior dislocation of the humerus, uh, basically a shoulder dislocation. Um, and then uh, the deficits that you'll see are basically, um, the key word here is the deltoid because that's the muscle that the axillary nerve innervates. And um, the deltoid function is shoulder abduction, so that's raising the arm above 15 degrees. I don't know if you remember, but the... Uh, the muscle that's involved in the first 15 degrees is the supraspinatus muscle. So after that, though, that would be the deltoid muscle. And you're also going to get loss of sensation over the deltoid and the lateral arm. And the other thing is you're going to see a flattened deltoid. And why that happens is because your muscles, you, know, you, you get muscle atrophy of the deltoid. So it's going to flatten out instead of this thick, juicy deltoid here. It's going to be nice, it's flat and weak. So next is the musculocutaneous muscle, which is highlighted here in this red. Okay, and that is can be caused by damage to the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. Remember, that's part of the upper trunk of the brachial plexus. And if you get damage to that, you're going to lose uh, elbow flexion and forearm supination. The other thing is gonna, you're going to get loss of lateral forearm sensation. So sensation over here is lost. Um, next is the radial nerve. I just want to go back and say that I never really get tested on this. And this is a lower yield nerve. Um, next is the radial nerve. This is super high yield. Um, you can see a little bit of it here, but it's going to dive down below your break, um, your biceps muscle. It's hard to see, but you're going to have to imagine it's there. Um, and that's kind of important. Because the way it gets damaged is you can get compression of the axilla, which is the, um, the armpit. And specifically, what you're going to see is patient with crutches, someone who has crutches is going to develop weakness, and or someone, um, something called Saturnite palsy, okay, that's where someone, I mean, they drank too much, they fall asleep on the chair, uh, with one of the arms over the, the chair, and that's going to get compression of the armpit. Other thing that can happen is you can get a mid-shaft fracture of the humerus right there, it's going to damage the radial nerve, and what's going to happen is you're going to get loss of extension, this is the key word here. The radial nerve is involved in extension of the elbow, the wrist, and the finger. So if you lose that, you're gonna, and you can see a wrist drop because again, you can't extend your wrist. You're also gonna get loss of sensation. Now basically, I the way I think of it is that all the back side of your arm, so back of the arm, back of the forearm, and if you keep going down, that that converges into the dorsum of the hand. So you're gonna lose sensation of all of that. Next is the median nerve. Median nerve is here, as you see, kind of goes down the middle because it's the median. And the way it can be damaged is damage to the supracondyle, or that's proximal. Again, remember, it goes all the way down to the hand. So this is the carpal tunnel. So that's where you can get carpal tunnel syndrome and get median nerve, nerve compression. So I was always confused by deficits with median nerve injury. And the way I've simplified it in my mind is basically if you have difficulty moving your index or middle finger. You'll see you hear phrases like Pope's Blessing, which you should know, but um, or something, some, you can get some clawing in first aid. It's terribly confusing. Just remember, if they have difficulty moving their index and middle finger, then it's probably a median nerve injury. And then there's also hand sensation that's relevant. I've um, poorly colored in the hand sensation innervation for the median nerve on the hands. So you can see it's pretty much the first three fingers and half of that fourth finger. And then um, note that on dorsum of the hand, the radial nerve um, takes up a lot of the space that, the, that you would think the median nerve does. So you have to keep that straight. Next is the ulnar nerve, which I view as the complement to the median nerve. Um, the ulnar nerve runs more along the medial side of the arm, and that's important. So now it's in the medial side um, because, again, you can get medial fracture of the medial epicondyle that can damage it, or you can get a hook of hamate fracture um, right here. Hook of hamate fractures, and you get injury to the ulnar nerve. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that would turn out like a GIF, but um, that's how you can get ulnar nerve damage. 
And what's going to happen is similar to the median nerve, but it's going to be the ring and pinky finger difficulty moving. First day you'll see stuff like the owner claw. I don't even know what else. It's too confusing. But just remember, it's difficulty moving the ring and pinky finger. And then uh, again, I've colored in this hand sensation for the ulnar nerve. It's the stuff that the median nerve and the radial nerve don't cover. So basically that pinky finger, half of that ring finger, uh, both sides of the, of the hand. So that's pretty much it for the upper extremity nerves. I'm just going to go through a brief overview. If you think you got it covered, you can just skip ahead to the next video. But um, I'm just going to test you all. What was the cause of injury to the axillary nerve? Um, remember that that was either uh, upper shaft of the humerus fracture, so over here, or an anterior dislo dislocation of the humerus. And what's going to happen is, remember the keyword for the deficits with injury is the deltoid. So you're going to get um, difficulty abducting the shoulder above 15 degrees. You're going to get um, flattening of that shoulder, and then you can also loss of sensation over the deltoid and the lateral arm. Next is the muscular cutaneous. Remember that's lower yield. But um, the injury here is the upper chunk of the brachial plexus compression, and you get loss of elbow flexion and forearm supination. Next is the radial nerve, which remember its course is under, it's not shown here. And remember the damage is compression of the axilla. So don't comp remember compression of the axilla damage is the radial nerve, not the axillary nerve. Um, compression of the axilla can be crutches or remember some guy falling asleep over the chair with his arm over the chair. The other thing is you can get a mid shaft fracture of the humerus. Remember the key word for radial nerve injury? What was that when I said? It was extension. When the radial nerve is super important for extension of the elbow, the wrist, and the fingers. And again, remember, what was the sensation of the radial nerve? Remember, it's everything in the back side of the arm. So it's the posterior arm, posterior forearm, and dorsum of the hand. Median nerve, remember, it goes down straight down the middle. Um, you can get damaged by a fracture of the uh, supracondyle. What was the distal um, damage? Remember, it fills the carpal tunnel. And what deficits will we see? Remember, it's super complicated. Um, it's just the first couple fingers, index and middle finger of the hand. You have difficulty moving them. And then the sensation I've drawn out before. And we'll cover again. Finally, the ulnar nerve. What? How do we damage the ulnar nerve? Remember, the ulnar nerve is in the medial side, so medial epicondyle fracture. Or um, what was the fracture of the proximal ulnar nerve? Remember, that's the hook of hamate. Um, finally, you have difficulty moving the ring and the pinky finger and then loss of the hand sensation. So again, fractures of the humerus can cause damage in multiple places. And the easy way to remember this is you go down the arm, and that's what you see. So if you fracture the surgical neck, you're going to get damage to the axillary nerve. Um, if you fracture the mid shaft, you can get damage to the radial nerve. And finally, if you fracture the supracondyle, then you get da um, damage to the median nerve. So you go down the arm and you get damage to the arm, ARM, okay. And again, this is just a brief overview of the hand sensation innervation. I like to show this, it's just super easy to remember. The key is to remember that the renal nerve is on the dorsum of the hand, remember that, um, it's posterior innervation. Median nerve, first three fingers, owner nerve, last two fingers. All right, so that's it for our upper nerve um, injuries and functions.